Welcome to Student Enrollment Data Population. We will cover data requirements for student enrollment reporting, demonstrate online maintenance and batch file submission, and cover error validations. Let's discuss some of the objectives for today. At the completion of today's training, you, the learner, will be able to request SSIDs, update student enrollment records, exit student enrollment records, all in effort to meet reporting requirements and maintain accurate and timely student information within CalPATS. The agenda you see now explains the different sections of today's training. So if you take it in a module, each of these sections will be modularized, beginning with the overview, then the data population. This is just student enrollment, submission validation, the data population demonstration for exits, and then a wrap up. If you're brand new to CalPADS, it is best to take the training in sequence beginning with the overview, each subsequent module, and then concluding with the wrap up. If you cannot watch this entire training in one session. Let's begin with the overview so you can see the big picture. So the student enrollment file type, which we commonly call the SENR, is just a piece of the pie. It's just a piece of the puzzle, right? The student profile is made up of the SENR and several other data types or record types. What you see before you are the record types required for fall one reporting. You can see the student enrollment. It's in purple the student information, abbreviated with SINF, the student program, abbreviated with SPRG, the student English language acquisition, that's the CELA or CELA or S-E-L-A, and then you have the SPED and the SSRV for special education program and the related services being the SSRV. The SPED and the SSRV come from the API directly from your special education system. The other file types, including the SENR, may be submitted uh, directly to CalPADS via batch or online maintenance. All of the file types, even those that you do not see related to student data, are used to create a student profile. The SENR is the key piece, which we will explain shortly, but it allows you to submit all the subsequent student record types. So what is the student enrollment record used for? The student enrollment data is required to obtain SSIDs, enroll and exit students, update student grade levels, and it allows students to be included in CASP and LPAC testing. Student enrollments are used to establish ownership of student records in CalPADS, determine cohort inclusion and cumulative enrollment counts, also, they are used to designate district and geographic residents, transfer reasons, and enrollment statuses. SENR exits are used to report graduates, dropouts, and completers, denote returning transfer or matriculating students, and indicate post-secondary transition, graduation, and program completion. There are some guidelines with the SENR submission. Students must be enrolled at the start of every school year. Students should be enrolled on the first date of expected enrollment and exit it with their last day of attendance. At the end of the school year, LEAs must exit all students, including those for whom they expect to be continuing within the same school the following year. At the beginning of the next school year, LEAs must re-enroll the students with the appropriate grade level for that year. The SENR is not used to update a student's demographic information or any other associated information. The appropriate file type must be used to submit demographic information, program eligibility or participation, or English language acquisition status, incidents, and so many other different data related to CalPADS collections. So here is an overview of the data flow. At the local level, you have a student information system that maintains your student's data. You extract files from this system and send it to CalPATS for matching and reporting. Each student that's housing your student information system that's submitted to CalPATS is assigned a unique SSID. CalPATS stores the student data that you submit. It can generate SSIDs upon request. 
It matches student demographic information to the requested SSIDs, and it matches student data with state databases outside of CalPATS. Lastly, you can see a representation for those state databases in green. CalPAD matches data for the Department of Human Health and Services for foster youth or direct certification reporting. So let's talk about the statewide student identifier. We often call this the SSID. All public California K-12 LEAs or local education agencies must obtain statewide student identifiers for the students in CalPADS. The SSID is unique. It's a 10-digit random number. It's also system generated. It's non-personally identifiable. SSIDs are used to track students and determine accurate dropout and graduation rates, as well as to link students to assessment scores. It is critical that you, the LEA, take great care when requesting new SSIDs to preserve the integrity of data reported to CalPATS. Another key concept is that for the SENR record, there's two ways to submit your student enrollment data. You can do it one by one using online maintenance, you log into the CalPADS web portal, and you update student information like data entry, similar to the way you manage your student information system. This can be time consuming and tedious because it is one by one, record by record. CalPADS has a batch file functionality where you can extract data and file types from your student information system submit in mass for several students and several records via batch file upload process. You can use one or more students per file and the files can be submitted in a, an Excel spreadsheet format or a text file. Commonly CSVs are accepted. Regardless of how your data is in CalPADS, they are subject to the same transaction rules and validations. So here we have a summary of the enrollment process. And we have the batch file submission at the top and online maintenance at the bottom. You're gonna start out by uh, submitting batch files. Then once those files are submitted, you're gonna verify and match students and SSIDs or request new SSIDs for students who have no demographic match. Once you either claim existing records and SSIDs or match new students by obtaining new SSIDs, you gain ownership of those students. From that, you establish a student profile. Ownership allows you to submit the subsequent student records like student information, programs, and English language acquisition, and you must continually maintain student data with regular updates as they change. The online process is very similar. Online, you would match the student's SSIDs or obtain SSIDs first with a demographic enrollment. Once you have enrolled your students using online maintenance, you can submit uh, the associated records individually, uh, the demographics through the student information, which includes race, ethnicity, and uh, address, student programs like free lunch or gate, and then the student English language acquisition for your EO students or TBD students. Remember, all this is dependent on gaining ownership, and if you choose the online maintenance method, you also must maintain and update data regularly. So we introduced ownership, but that's really a key concept, so let's talk a little bit about ownership. The student enrollment start end dates determine the period of ownership for student records in CalPADS. To add, update, or delete student information, not the file type, but all the associated records, the student information, LEAs must have ownership of the student record. Very simply, this means you can update, change, or delete records in CalPADS that are associated to your period of enrollment and only your period of enrollment. While you can see a longitudinal view of the student's entire history in CalPADS, you can only affect those records which you are said to have owned. Each record type has its own processing rules based on ownership. So the student information, for example, this is where you submit student demographic data. 
the effective starting end dates must correspond within the enrollment start dates. Okay, now when you look at the student program, as long as there's no conflicting ownership, meaning another LEA has an enrollment period that overrides yours, eligibility program start dates may precede the enrollment start date. Participation of programs fall within the student's enrollment period at the school of enrollment. So there's a little bit of flexibility. In some instances, program eligibility can be established prior to enrollment as long as there's no prior enrollment that creates a conflicting period. And so each file type has its own. We're not going to cover all of those listed. So let's talk about the student profile. The student profile records are required during each submission. An enrollment in CalPETS must exist in CalPETS prior to any other record types being submitted or posted. So for fall one, you're required to submit student enrollment, student information, student programs, student English language, student special education programs, and those related services, right? Fall one is specific to our student data. Well, fall two is typically courses, student course section enrollment, and staff data. But those record types that are specific to students are the student course section enrollment and the post-secondary status file, right? End of year one is course completion, which requires course records and staff demographics, but specific to students and the student profile is the student course completion record and the student career technical education record. Then end of year two is specific to student program, so only the student program file is required. And then end of year three requires a student absence summary, the student incident, the student incident result, the student offense file, the SENR, uh, which is the exit of your students, the student enrollment. And then the end of year four requires your special education program, the student services, and the post-secondary transition. And so there's several different file types that comprise the student profile submitted throughout the year. And so there's a need for timely data submissions and ongoing maintenance of your student records. So we've given you the overview and some key ideas and the main points for student enrollment. The best thing we can do now is demonstrate for you, right? So we'll begin with the online demonstration of submitting student enrollment records, and we'll put what we presented as theory into practice.